believe he waited until now to say this. Like, he knew. I, he's I, about I, to go to college. Topic of the day. Yeah. Putting kids on the school bus. Oh, whoa. Oh, oh. um, if you have the ability and the option, don't do it. Okay. So there's a lot 100%, there. 100%. Don't we do it. We didn't put our kids on the school bus until... Um, we got here. Eighth grade. Seventh and eighth grade they were in. Yeah. Up until that point, no matter what school <clears throat> they were in, we dropped off, we picked up. Why? Um... I don't think that we were trying to keep them off the bus. I don't remember trying to keep them off the bus. I just remember, you know, we had the time and we wanted to drop them off and, and pick them up. You know, as we're dropping them off, we prepare them for the day. As we're picking them up, we are asking them, you know, how did your day go? You know, what's going on with you and your friends? Whatever, you know, typically there was always something that was happening after school. So, you know, that was more time to spend with them, I guess. I never really thought, put a lot of thought into it, but um, the putting them on the bus was uh, huge. Right. So as a backdrop, you and I for a long time have been work at home entrepreneurs. Yeah. And that afforded us certain abilities and also we suffered certain things as a result. So... Um, we at times would have the ability to get up in the morning and make the kids breakfast. Mm -hmm. That was a regular mm -hmm. thing. Um, that was like 5.30 in the morning. 5.30, it was dark. We'd get up in the morning, make them sausage and eggs because we wanted them to have high protein breakfast before they went to school. Um, <clears throat> we used to pack lunches for them as well until um, either Amir was too cool for it or they just, Mike would lose his lunchbox every day <laughs> we had to transition him into uh bags but anyways um yeah we used to get up in the morning and make them breakfast and then we would take them to school it was every day right and so the work at home piece this is pre-pandemic and we're talking about decades yeah we've been doing this since like 2006 2007 right that allowed um that allowed for us we, we put a lot of hours in work so we're kind of always working right uh, work became, and this is Rustin actually, my brother faults us for this to some extent. He says, well, you know, you make it look too easy. You look like people, don't, the boys aren't aware that you're always working. They just think you're sitting there in front of the TV, which you are, <laughs> but you, they don't know that you got three three laptops in front of you and, and you're in you know, a webinar in your ear and you're responding to emails the whole time. Yeah. Um, but the uh, the ability to do that gave us the ability to also do things like coach sports. We've coached, yep. we both coached kids sports mm -hmm. for our kids teams. Mm -hmm. um, you know that was taxing, but it was yes, like a thing was. that we were able to do. Yeah. Um, and then also we were able to drive the kids to and from school every day. And now, practice when they had soccer, or you know we would sit at the soccer games or soccer practice. Uh, when Demi had practice for basketball, we would sit at her practice. We both remember being not like directly asked not to bring your Politely baby back. Politely asked to excuse ourselves. <laughs> we had the boys, they were young, probably what, like five and six, playing while Demi was practicing basketball. And so, because we, you know, we wanted, we always wanted to be there. We want to be present. So, you know, we made it a practice of being present, whether it's in the morning before mm -hmm. school, picking them up after school during practice we wanted to just be present right and you said it wasn't deliberate but it definitely was deliberate for me at some point i was aware that i wanted to continue driving them to and from school because mm -hmm. i knew that all the things were on the bus i don't think i knew like i don't think i had um you know, and I don't think I, I fully grasped the concept of everything that was going to be introduced on the bus and, you know, just uh, the gravity of that decision because it was definitely mm -hmm. um, a pivotal moment in their lives, most definitely. Yeah. And uh, so that was always a thing. Like even um, in my childhood, it was, you know, we were always either at church on the church bus, at school, 
on the sports bus. Mm-hmm. And the bus is where it happens. <laughs> Even see, before the internet, the bus is where it happens. See, I still don't know what you're talking about because I was on the bus. I was never on a church bus, but I played sports the whole time I was in high school. There wasn't anything going down on the bus. <laughs> yeah, so, okay, fine. On, on the all-female team that you were on, fine. Nothing was happening on the bus. But for me... Uh, when you're finally on the bus, when the the bus, the only adult in the whole place is facing forward and paying attention to traffic. And I mean, same thing went for summer camp. You know, when I went away to summer camps and stuff, it was day camps. They were bus, right? Mm-hmm. The bus is unsupervised kids time. And that's when like the worst of things come out. Like I was talking about YouTube, right? The mm-hmm. comments in YouTube is like the lowest uh, version of human civility. Yeah. Like people can anonymously say anything, put any kind of content there, and it's really where you find the worst trolls. Yeah. Right? The school bus for kids is the comments of YouTube. The, wow. Whatever the worst society has to oh offer, it is present on the school bus. Why would you allow us to put our kids on the school bus? <laughs> it eventually has to that? happen. It eventually has to happen. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> You uh, wait until now. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you waited until now to say this. Like, what do you mean? I, he's I, about I, to go to college. Right. He eventually had to have it. Oh you, you have to be inoculated. You have to, be, you have to receive the inoculation in order to form your antibodies, right? So you had to. They had to have it. It was just how far can I develop you before that oh happens? Oh my god. <laughs> can't believe you knew that going into it. You never you brought like you, that up. You act like you've never been on a school bus or any bus before. I remember being on a school bus before I think I went to first grade. And it was nothing like that. Um, and I don't even think I went to that school for very long. Not because of the bus, but just because it was really far from home. But other than that, like I said, I played sports. And none of that happened on the bus. Mm. So, like, whatever you're talking about, mm. and if any of you know what he's talking mm. about, mm. I... I am completely oblivious to it. So the fact that you said that is like, I can't believe this is what you tell me as we're about to drop him off at college. He's you want to say that? They all made it. They made it. Imagine like saying like, hey, okay, you know, I'm going to put you in this room. Your, your brother has chicken pox, right? I'm going to put, it was a school school thought where, you know, if you, your sibling had chicken pox, they put you in a room with him or her yeah. so that you can okay. have chicken pox. Let's get it done with now. The bus is chicken pox. Right, wow. you put them in there so that they can develop the antibodies to chicken pox. Otherwise, they end up going to college. Imagine went to college, never exposed to porn, never exposed to cursing, never exposed to like rudeness and incivility and, and like you know low level violence. You know, <laughs> okay. they had to have it. I understand. I get that. I just the fact that we're like their revelations coming out right now, like right before he goes to school, are amazing, and imagine, that is definitely one of them. Imagine how many families put their kids on the bus in third grade. We, our God, kids didn't go until wow. seventh or eighth grade, at least that. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. And you know, I get it. Like you have working families where you have to do that. We just we did not have that. It wasn't a necessity for us. So, like, if you have the option, I would one hundred percent say. You put you take them to school and drop them off every day. Doesn't matter how much it sucks. Embrace the suck. Um, and I don't want to say it, like it doesn't. It doesn't suck. Uh, like there are times when yeah, I didn't really feel like getting up at five thirty in the morning. But like once you're up, you're good. Um, I do believe feeling like they could get on the bus and we could sleep in a little longer was great. Um, but like the trade off, I I would say keep taking them to school mm-hmm. if you have the option agreed 